No nonsense gin drinking. All gin and a surprising amount of nonsense. Hello gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman and today my friends, I have an air of trepidation about me because my old, it's not friend is it, my old uh, difficult partner, Hendrix have brought out another one of their gins and it is a limited edition, my friends. Now, many of my regular viewers and subscribers will know that I have had, like I say, a difficult relationship with Hendrix because to be honest, I don't like it very much. However, that is offset with the fact that I am in, I think I'm in a minority because millions and millions of people like it and it is exported all over the world and readily available and indeed one of my most watch uh, 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 gin videos. Well as I say they are back with this little fellow which goes by the name of Hendrix Flora Adora and you might be thinking to yourself well that, that that's I, I don't know what that means and I, I, I thought the same when I uh, I don't know why I stuttered on uh, I, I, I and the other I, I, I. was it two IIIs I don't know but I was definitely doing a lot of stuttering but yeah I was wondering what it is as well and Apparently, it's, it doesn't give you too much uh, detail. Apparently, it's a floral version of their original gin. As I say, it is a limited edition, but I thought uh, I would... Uh, it, oh, God. I thought I would bring it to you and review it on my show, as is my wife, as I do with every single Hendrix gin. I'd give it a damn... I've given it... I've given them a pretty good, a pretty good crack of the whip. I've tried... What is it? It must be four. Well, no, no, I reckon it's five. Five Hendrix. This will be, I think, the sixth one I've featured on the show now. So you can't say I don't give them a chance. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe this one could be the one. Oh, no, I did like one. The Amazonian one wasn't too bad, was it? But maybe this could join the Amazonian one in the realms, the hallowed ranks of uh, Hendrickson's that I actually like. Before we get stuck in, though, I need to thank another one of my viewers who has joined the ranks of my patrons and become an official supporter of the show. So, Mr. Richard Eastam. Richard, thank you very, very much. You are a gentleman and an official, an official and official supporter of the show, and I salute you. Now then, guys, before we go on, I want to show you this lovely little product that I've been sent by the people at Vinecraft. And I do do promotional videos occasionally, but I only do ones that I think you're going to genuinely like and are genuinely good. And this, my friends, is one of them. As you can see, it is a little bar set, but not not only is it a bar, it's not just any old bar set, it revolve. It's a revolving bar set. Look at that. It's mesmerizing. I, 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 I love it. And the reason I love it is it just kind of keeps everything so neat and in one place because I've got cocktail uh, sets in the house and there's bits here and bits everywhere and they all get lost. But this kind of keeps it nice and neat and all in one lovely revolvable little rack. So if you have a look here, we obviously got the uh, shaker in the middle, the mixer, and then we've got some lovely pouring devices here, lovely little cork stoppers there. Got some nice little pins there to stick in all sorts of things. Well, probably mostly fruit. A lovely little bottle opener there with a nice uh, all sort of uh, various different bits on it as well. Uh, a lovely filter there. Nice little pair of tongs. These are my favourites though, the metal straws. And also, I love this, You not only do you get the metal straw, because if you've got a metal straw, you think to yourself, well, how am I going to clean it out? Well, hello. <whistles> Goes in there. I was hoping that whistling sound might be a bit better. Let me try it again. Hang on. There we go, that's better. So that's for cleaning out the straws. You've got a lovely little spoony thing there, long mixer, a nice little, uh, what do you call it there, a pulverizer, a masher. I like to call it all these different things. Nice little uh, set of uh, measuring uh, shot things there and a sieve there. All nice and neat and they're available, for, as I say, from the company called Vinecraft, of which I will put the link in the section below. Now I'm going to, as a special treat for you, I'm going to show you how to make a lovely, simple, quick cocktail. Now this is one of my most favourite and simple cocktails. I've featured it on the show before. It is called the Gimlet. It, and this is how you make it. So all you do is two ounces of gin, stick that in there like that, whack it in the old mixer, boom. One ounce of sugar syrup, nice and sticky in there, boom, double boom. And just one ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Stick that in there, you guessed it, treble boom. Stick a bit of ice in there like that, get the top on, give it a good old shake until it's too cold to handle. Take top off, pour that into a glass. You have some nice little icy shards in there as well. That, my friends, is a lovely gimlet. Head over to vinecraft.com to pick yours up today. So let's find out a bit about it on the website. And as we know, when I do a, uh, a Hendrix gin, it is from Scotland. And I shall, I shall be uh, drawing out my, for, for the first time in a while actually, my uh, perfect and impeccable and uh, extremely accurate Scottish accent. Hendrix Flora Adora, perfect for casual get-togethers and buzzing with an, with an enchanting aroma of enchanting, enchanting twice, hang on, enchanting. 
enticing, sorry, an enticing aroma, an enchanting flowers. Get it right, Freeman, you soft southern bastard. Enchanting flowers and a fresh herbal character. Herbal? Herbal. Herbal, I think that's right. Herbal character that is classically Hendrix in style. The juniper and coriander backbone is lengthened by a luscious green and wonderfully sweet floral characteristics, creating a wonderful and balanced gin suez. Exquisite with tonic and a slice of cucumber. Oh, don't be giving me that nonsense. Don't tell me. I, uh, fair enough. Tell me what's in the gin. What annoys me on these websites is when they tell me how to drink my gin, especially when they tell me to put cucumber in it, because I don't bloody like cucumber, as my regular viewers know. Anyway, guys, that's enough fannying and uh, rabbiting on from me. Rabbiting on? That's an interesting verb, that, isn't it? Rabbiting? I think I was rabbiting there. It was definitely a bit of rabbitage. Right, here we go. Let's get the old uh, cork out, shall we? Because I do believe that Hendrix does have a cork, if I remember rightly. Let's just tease this little bit off that covers the cork there. Not very pleasing. Yeah, and of course it does have a cork. So are my friends. It is the return of the, of the Hendrix Scottish Cork Test. The Hendrix Scottish Cork Test. So let's go here, have a squeak. Do we have a squeak? Oh, look at... Listen to that. Can you look at a squeak? I don't know, but listen to it all the same. That is a champion squeak. I don't remember if the other ones had a good squeak. We'll go for this one. Hang on a second. No, it didn't. It didn't. I think it might be down to each individual bottle to be honest. But uh, anyway, let's go for the full pull. Now, what I'm, I'm going to try something new here because everyone's saying that the cork test always sounds pretty loud, but I say sometimes it's not that good. And I think the problem is I'm doing it right next to my microphone here. So what I should do is probably do it a little bit higher, like over here, say. Although I think that's going to result in me pulling the bottle down there and covering myself in gin. So let's do it. Maybe I could do it on the table. Let's show you that that works. Here we go. Full pull. Oh, see that to me was a little bit lacklustre. Maybe it will have transferred uh, uh, in the same way it got my ears because it's a little bit further away. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because we all know it's just a bit of fun. So then, and, oh my goodness, I can, I can get a little bit of it already. And uh, to be honest, oh God, I, I'm not a big, this is the trouble. I'm not a big fan of Hendrix. I'm not a big fan of floral <laughs> gins. So it's not looking great. And I am getting a rather floralage, floral, florality, floral, floor, I don't know how to have any other ways to say floral. I'm getting a sense of floralness uh, a wafting up already and I'm going to put my nose, uh, my nose in with an air of trepidation, but here we go. Holy crap, that smells bloody awful. And I know you're probably thinking, don't beat around the bush, tell us what you think, but honestly, that is extraordinarily overpoweringly flowery and it just oh god you know that stuff you know we call it pot puree i don't know if you have it in in other countries i've said about this before it's comes in a bowl it was very popular in the 1980s i think the 90s comes in a bowl it usually sits halfway up the stairs on a little table and it's a collection of dried i don't know what it is petals and uh, sort of foliage and stuff and it's Put, someone's poured a load of perfume all over it and it smells really strong, like flowery kind of perfume. It's supposed to, I think the idea is you put it in bathrooms to stop it smelling of shit. Wow, it smells exactly like that. And to be honest, it smells like a, like a kind of an old lady's, yeah, like an old lady's perfume. Not the sort of thing that I would want to be drinking. I, I don't sniff it and think, hmm, that's, that's nice, that, that, that's nice, that's a nice consumable. However, however, let's, let's throw caution to the wind and let's try and make a gin tonic. But I'm not, I'm, I must say, I'm not looking forward to this at all. But you never know, it might surprise me. It might surprise me. I reckon that's probably about much. Let's have a look at the ABV on this one. What is it? It is... It is 70... 43 point... God damn it, I'm old. 43.4, actually, which is a little bit more. It's 41 over there. So they pepped it up a little bit. But uh, anyway, uh, gin aside, uh, thank you to all my wonderful patrons and my uh, uh, YouTube members because you are literally paying for the gin on this show. I thank you all uh, for your generosity and uh, because this video could not be made without you. Well, it could have been made, but it would have cost me a lot more money. Anyway, everybody, this is Hendrix Flora Adora. I say, oh God, with an air of dread... Here we go. Cheers. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't actually get it into my mouth. I just sniffed and it made me cough a little bit. Uh, that was like, well, that was, although to be fair, it was good content, wasn't it? Anyway, here we go. Cheers. I'll try not to repeat that again. Hang on. There's a little bit of extra spittle in there. It's technically a cocktail now. Here we go. Hang on. Oh, my God.
Well, gin lovers, well, 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 I, you know, I, I didn't have high hopes as, Christ, that is the worst aftertaste. It's absolutely foul. As I say, I didn't have high hopes, and but I tell you what, I think of all the, I, you know I don't enjoy Hendrix Gin generally. I quite, that Amazonian one was okay, but I have to say, out of the, all the ones I've tried, everything, I reckon we have a winner for the absolute worst. Honestly, honestly, I cannot tell you. It tastes like you're drinking someone's perfume, like an old lady's perfume. It's exactly like with the aroma. It tastes like you, you drink something. Think, oh God, that's not actually a drink. That's something, you know, some sort of weird chemical that I'm not supposed to consume. At this point, I usually go in for a second confirmation slurp to try and give you the flavors again, but I really don't want to do it, but I'll, I'll do it anyway, because you know, I, do, I, I, I go to all sort of great lengths for you guys. So here we go. Mm. Holy, <coughs> oh man, it's just intense, intense and sharp and acidic and potently flowery, just. It, it tastes like you've like, when you go to a dinner and you sometimes have like a uh, sort of a little uh, thing of flowers, what they call, not, not carnations, are they? Yeah, actually, go with that, carnations, those things you have when you get married on here. Tastes like I've just literally picked, I was at a wedding, and ironically, I'm getting married next month, and uh, just in case you care, tastes like you pick one of those out and just go, mmm, delicious. And it's just lingering, it's lingering my mouth now. The, 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 the flavor is just so strong. I think even if you liked floral gins, I think the intenseness of that flavor is just overpowering. There's too much flavor in there, even if you liked it, let alone if you don't like it like me. It's absolutely disgusting, and I don't think that should ever be sold to any human being, or, or indeed any uh, 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 animal. So as you can see, I'm fairly conclusive on that one, but let's let's just try it. You know, I mean, I, I don't think it's gonna be any improvement. Oh, it's an excellent squeak though, I'll give it that. But so I'm gonna try it in my No Nonsense Gin Drinking mug, which of course you could own if you click on the uh, link in the bit below. Um, you'll be the first person to do it, but um, I'll be very grateful. I should probably uncover it. There we go, look at that attractive thing anyway. Oh yes. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. <coughs> and that, my friends, is a first. I'm sorry about that, that's disgusting. If my mum sees this, she'll be extremely cross and tell me off, even though I'm 42 years old. But honestly, honestly, that is just putrid. Again, it tastes like a mouthful of chemicals. If you've gone into a, a shop and uh, found some perfume and rather than sniffing it, you took it into your mouth, it's kind of burning on the tongue now. That's kind of what, you know what, I'm going to have to use the oh, bit of Tanqueray 10 from the last video I just filmed from last time just to, oh, just to swill my mouth out. It's even ruined, ruining the Tanqueray 10. That's a testament to how bad, actually, how bad it is. So then, guys, so that I think we've established I do not like that one. However, we have not established what you're going to have to pay for it. Now, it's very similar to uh, the other ones, I think. I'd like to keep it around £30, as you know, for a mainstream gym. And to be fair to them, that's one good thing about Hendrix. They do keep it on the money, literally. That is £30 on the nose. So... I would say to you, if you do like Hendrix, at least you're not gonna be able to, at least you're not gonna be ripped off by it. So guys, so guys, to sum up, to sum up, I have to say, I've had a run of good gins on the show. I've had a lot of extraordinary gins recently. I had some wonderful ones for my top 10 last month, but I tell you what, that I think is gonna be, I think, that, yeah, I think it can. I think I can crown that as my least favorite and most disgusting gin I've ever tried on this show. And as I said, I don't like Henrix generally, but I've never gone that far. I don't think I've ever gone to these lengths. I've never been so putrefied, I think that's the right word, putrefied and disgusted um, by by something as I has with this one. I, you know, these ones I did, did, didn't write. The original one I just didn't like very much. It wasn't my cup of tea. It's quite cucumbery. It's just not my thing. But as I say, a lot of people do. But I would be very interested. In fact, if you are a fan of the original um, Hendrix. So by the way, everyone keeps asking, that one says Nerissa because that's a personalized bottle I got for my uh, fiance, but it's still Hendrix in there. If there are any fans of the original Hendrix, um, please try this and tell me, let me know in the comments in the section below and let other people know as well, because I'll be fascinated because I just don't see how anyone could genuinely enjoy that. And I mean, you know, I, I, I doubt Hendrix are watching this. I doubt very much, but if you are, seriously, I'm, you know, I'm not a big fan of your stuff anyway, but that, I, I know it's a limited edition, and to be honest, I'm quite grateful because that 
is genuinely awful and I implore you to stop selling it to people. Just go and chuck it all in the river immediately. So guys, so guys, a, a bit of a negative video today, as you can tell. However, I hope you found it useful. I'm always, you know, I've said a million times in the show, I'm only here to be honest. You know, what's the point of me making the show if I'm not giving you honest reviews? Okay, so, and this is my honest opinion. All subjective, of course, of course, but, um, you know, for what it's worth, that's my, that's my opinion. But anyway, I hope you found it useful. And I'm, 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 I'm a point was I, was, I was trying to get to was the fact that if you indeed you have, um, don't forget to subscribe to my show so you can get watch all my other videos when they come out. Press the like button on the video so people know you've liked it. And uh, if you want to uh, join my uh, patrons, like um, good old what was his name? Oh man, Richard, Richard, what was his surname? Richard, God damn, that's not Richard. Where is Richard? Richard Eastham, there we go. Good old Richard Eastham. If you want to join the uh, patrons like he did, head over to my Patreon page, or you can also support me by clicking on the join button below this video to become a YouTube member. But until next time, guys, you all know the drill. Take care, stay safe. Thank you to all my patrons and members, and keep drinking the gin.